Welcome back to Mastering Next.js. In this module, we're going to talk about managing assets and SEO, otherwise known as search engine optimization. Now, assets and SEO are two really important parts about building web applications. You're going to have images or files that you want to host, and you want your website to be found on search engines like Google. And to do that and have it be ranked higher than other pages, you want to have good SEO. Now, next um, zero config approach makes it really easy to host your assets and it works in a similar way that the pages directory works that holds, it, holds all of the routes of your application. So as you've seen inside pages, you can have different routes. You can do the same thing with the public folder. Now public exposes all of these files uh, in the same directory structure that it does with pages. So slash index in pages, that routes to the root of your application. Uh, robots.txt or images inside of public route to slash robots or slash images. So for example, uh, in this blog, I have an images folder and then I have a bunch of images inside of here. So if I go to masteringnextjs.com slash images slash my name, you see that it corresponds to this image in my directory. So there's a one-to-one -one relationship here, which makes it really easy to host images. And all of those files are exposed and they're underneath your public directory. Now you'll notice uh, I have a directory called favicons. And what a favicon is, is this small image that displays on the tab in your browser uh, for your website. Now you notice in this folder, I have a ton of different favicons of different sizes and different names. And each one of these uh, corresponds to a different browser or a different platform that someone is going to be viewing the website on. Now I didn't make all of these myself. There is a really helpful favicon generator website that allows you to upload a picture. So for this website, I just use the JavaScript logo and then it will output all of these different files for you so that you can then um, put them in your favicons folder in your application. So another nice thing about this website is if I take the Mastering Next.js site, you can actually check what it looks like to make sure that your website displays as you want across all different properties. So on Safari, on Chrome, Windows, in the browsers, you wanna make sure that all of these display your favicon properly with the added benefit of on iOS, um, you can actually save your application to your home screen and open it up as kind of a pseudo app. Uh, and that's something that you get through having this favicon set up. I also had an images folder. And one thing I wanted to touch on was image compression and optimization. Now there's two tools that I like to use that I baked into my workflow for when I wanna commit images for a blog. And those tools are called Image Optim and Image Alpha. Now these are free programs that you can download. You can use them um, on your own. They don't have to be baked into your process. But what they do is they help you compress and optimize uh, both PNGs, JPEGs, and GIFs, or GIFs if you're a psycho. Uh, <laughs> so if you download these tools, uh, you'll see I have these scripts in my package JSON and what they're doing is for every GIF or JPEG or PNG that's in this directory, it's going to run image optim or image alpha over them. And I have this set up as a pre-commit hook so that all of my images get optimized before the commit gets pushed up to GitHub. Now, there's pros and cons of doing this. Um, the con is that all of these images live on my file system, which can potentially take longer when you're cloning the repository or when you're you know, trying to make updates. Um, the pro is that it's not a part of build time uh, with you know, some other frameworks like Gatsby. Uh, it can take a really long time to build out your pages when you have just you know thousands and thousands of files so there's pros and cons to both. Another option that I'm gonna 
touch on in an, another module is using a CMS. And when you have a CMS, then you can actually host all the images on there. And some of those services actually do the compression and optimization for you. So it's just something to be cognizant of because you want to make sure that you're serving up uh, as small as files as you can and you're not serving up uh, just ridiculously sized images because that's going to help your pages load faster, which actually tie into SEO. So Google has started to rank sites higher that get better um, page load times and just overall are more performant pages. So you really want to consider uh, what that effect of having lots of images or large images will have on your page load time. Continuing to think about Google, we want to have good SEO and we want to control what information that we expose about our application so that Google knows um, what information to display. And one way to do that is through open graph tags. Now, open graph is a standard that essentially allows you to insert these tags inside of the head of your document, of your HTML. And when search engines crawl this, they now know how to display your content. So to do that, inside of this application, I have a custom page component. Now this page component, um, I pass in some sort of children, a date, a description, all sorts of other information that's irrelevant for this part, but I actually override the next head and I pass in a bunch of meta tags. So I'll quickly go over some of these. Um, some of these have to do with the favicons or theming that I want to set up for you know, each specific browser or platform that I want to use, but we also have ones like description, which is going to give the search engine a little bit more information about the page that they're viewing, um, some keywords, titles, um, the URL. You might also want to verify your sites on Google or Yandex so that you can use their tools to analyze how your content looks and performs in search engines. Um, if there was an associated image with like a blog post, for example, I'm also including some additional meta tags for images. Um, same thing with dates. And then finally, there's actually even Twitter specific meta tags that you can use to control how your content looks when it's shared on Twitter. And really what this comes down to is ideally people are going to be sharing your blog posts on social media platforms and you want to make sure that you can control how that looks. And uh, I'm going to touch on this more in the next module, but if we look at an, uh, an example of an MDX file, so a blog post, um, you'll see that I'm setting up these meta tags in the beginning to say the description of the page, the featured image that I want to use, and then the title. And Facebook has a tool called the Sharing Debugger that allows you to take any URL and see what it looks like when somebody shares this on Facebook. So you see the featured image, you see the title, a preview, and then the description. And it actually goes into more details down here where you can see everything that it parsed from those meta tags. So Facebook has this. Twitter also has something called the card validator, which does basically the same thing, showing what it will look like when somebody shares your tweet. And there, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. Now I wanna highlight that those tools are very helpful and if you're sharing something for the first time, sometimes it's nice to go out to the Facebook debugger, Facebook debugger and scrape it so that the images get populated. Um, but there's also a Chrome extension that will give you the same information as this and this. And it is called OG Image Preview. So it shows you Facebook, it shows you Twitter, a couple others, and then it also shows you just the raw tags that it parses on the page. So I'd recommend downloading this uh, if you want to get a little more insight into how your meta tags, open graph tags are being parsed on your page. Um, another thing I want to talk about while we're here is a custom document page. Now I showed overriding document when we talked about styled components. 
And in this application, I'm, I'm doing the same exact thing here to get um, style components set up. But I wanna also touch on, you're probably gonna want Google Analytics on some kind of page. And the recommended way to do that is to override what document returns from the server and include this script for Google Tag Manager, which then allows you to have Google Analytics on the page. And just as a reminder, this code will be open source so that you can reference this, but essentially you can override head again and include this Google Tag Manager script and put in your tracking ID for your specific Google Analytics project. And now when your content is served up from the server, this custom document, uh, it's going to include Google Analytics uh, and allow you to be able to track how users are using your website. So this is a pretty common thing I think a lot of people will do, so it's good to know uh, exactly how to do that. Now there are two other Chrome extensions that I found really useful that I wanna touch on that you might also use. And one of them is called SEO Minion. And this allows you to do a couple more things to learn about how search engines are processing your site. So the concept of on-page SEO is, you know, you wanna have your highest keywords, for example, Next.js, I want that to be in an H1. And as keywords get less important, they, they need to be in, you know, less high of headings. So the most important thing on this page is Next.js. This is the Next.js guide. The next important thing, or most important thing, is the description about what the course is. And then finally, it dives into some other headings for some you know, tertiary points about the course. So we can use this to parse that on-page SEO and also get access into those OG tags. But then we can also check and make sure that you know, none of the links on the page are broke, which is obviously a good thing. It can save you some manual checks if you have you know, tens of hundreds of links. Um, you can actually see what it would look like in a search engine. So if I search for Next.js, and my listing was number one, you know, cross my fingers, probably not gonna happen, but <laughs> if it was, this is what it would look like. Let's, let's make this a little more realistic. There we go. So yeah, that's really helpful. Um, there's a couple other nice things in here that you can check out. I've really enjoyed this extension. The other one is called Accessibility Insights. So as you're developing your page, you wanna make sure that it's accessible for everyone as well. And this Chrome extension can do a lot of nice automated checks for you. So if you go and click on this assessment, um, it has all of these different things that it can run through and check and make sure that your site uh, is meeting accessibility needs. Another way that you can check uh, how your site is meeting accessibility needs and also performance and a few others is by using this performance tab um, inside of Google Chrome debugger tools. And then also you can run a lighthouse audit. Now this audit's gonna tell you what the performance is like. You know, if you've opted to do a progressive web app, you can do that. It's gonna talk about best practices, accessibility, SEO, and give you a nice report so that you know what you need to do to improve on your website. So I would recommend checking this out and running it on your projects because how your site scores on lighthouse can sometimes affect uh, how high it's gonna be ranked on Google. So this is a pretty short module. There's not a ton to talk about here, but it is very crucial to know. Now you know how you can host your assets, what the public directory does for you, um, how you can compress or optimize images for blogs or other content that you're producing, and then how critical open graph tags are and meta tags are so that you can control what your website looks like in search engines. So with that, thanks for tuning in and stay tuned for the next episode. Cheers.